Free response question 5 on the 2013 AP Chem exam. We have a sample of C2H4 in a gaseous form and it's placed in an evacuated rigid container. It's 2 liters big. We start to heat it up 300 Kelvin to 450 Kelvin and the pressure of the sample is measured below. We can see um, a direct relationship as the temperature warms. The pressure is increasing. The letter A, we want two reasons why the pressure change as the temperature of the acetylene, C2H4, increases. And be sure that you're answering that at the molecular level. Well, this relates to the kinetic molecular theory. To earn our credit here, we're going to simply comment on that very thing, the kinetic molecular theory. So five, letter A, we know that as the temperature increases, the average kinetic energy of molecules increase as well. As that temperature rises, the kinetic energy rises, those molecules are moving faster and faster and faster. The increase in kinetic energy, it simply causes two things to happen. They're going to hit more frequently, so an increase in the number of collisions. And when they hit, they're hitting with more force. Remember, pressure is simply force per unit area. And if I increase their, their uh, rate at which they're moving, you increase their amount of energy, the force with which they hit the side of the container is also increasing. And there's the second re uh, reason that we can comment on. The increasing temperature is also increasing the amount of force the molecules are hitting with. So here's our, our two reasons. Temperature is rising, the kinetic energy rises, that's a very important comment, and therefore the number of collisions per unit time is increasing. More energy, more collisions. Also, the second factor, when you rise, uh, increase the temperature, the temperature is rising, the increase the amount of force with which molecules hit will earn us credit for commenting on two reasons why the pressure went up. The letter B, here we have an equation, C2H4 is in a gaseous form with HCl gas is producing another molecule, uh, C2H5Cl. Here, notice delta H is negative, Kj is per mole for the reaction, so this is an exothermic process. When HCl, gaseous form, is injected into the container at 450 Kelvin, so right about here we are putting in another molecule, we start to see a fall in the decrease, decrease of total pressure. What happened at the molecular level? Why would adding another gaseous molecule actually force the uh, pressure down? And that's simply looking at the stoichiometry here. Remember, pressure is defined as the number of collisions per unit time. So here on the left side of our equation, we have two gaseous moles. And on the right side of our equation, we have one gaseous mole. And that's really what we have to comment on. The letter B, as the reaction is proceeding left to right, as the reactants form products, we see two gaseous moles of reactants forming one gaseous mole of product. this would decrease the number of collisions. The fewer molecules decrease pressure. Uh, how about due to fewer molecules? So I'm sure that we've explained that very thoroughly. 
The reaction proceeded right from left to right. The two moles of reactant gases are being converted into the one mole of product gas. That decrease in moles of the gas will cause there to be less molecular collisions and therefore a drop in pressure. Here's a mechanism. Step one, we hear, we see the C2H4 colliding with HCl, giving us C2H5 positive and Cl negative, so two ions. Here we see C2H5 plus with the C2H5 then going on and forming our final product, C2H5Cl. The rate determining step is the first step. So write the rate law, letter C. Well, the rate law comes from the slowest step. So to earn our credit for letter C, we simply have to show the rate law in the forward direction of the rate determining step. We write that by saying rate is equal to K times the concentration of C2H4, first order, times the concentration of HCl, first order. This is a bimolecular collision. And that's that. Identify an intermediate in the reaction above. Now notice it says identify an intermediate. There are two. Intermediates are those that get made in the first step and then immediately used in the next. And so there are two possible correct answers. And I believe for this question, you only had to answer one of the two. So the two possible choices, C2H5 plus is an intermediate and or Cl negative. You didn't need both, you needed one or the other. This problem continues on the next page. We see an activation energy diagram. Potential energy on the y-axis, progression of reactants. So as time is going by, reactants turn to products. We want to draw a curve that shows the energy changes that occur during the progression of the reaction and just illustrate that two-step enthalpy change. So keep in mind, if the first one were indeed the rate determining steps, we need to show two steps on our uh, progression curve. The first one should have the higher activation energy since it is indeed in uh, determining the rate law. So something along this line would be fine. So for letter E, we need to show on a diagram somewhere where reactants formed a products. And I'm going to show a larger energy barrier as compared to the other. A couple of uh, important notes. The overall reaction was exothermic, so as reactants formed products, we had to indeed show the overall energy change for the reaction. Delta H of reaction was exothermic, so we had to be sure that the um, products were indeed at lower energy. We had to label the activation energy, which is from the reactants. But keep in mind what this was asking. I'll go back and just kind of show the other part of this quickly. Um, the curve illustrated both the proposed two-step mechanism and the enthalpy change of the reaction. And then be sure to um, clearly indicate the activation energy for the rate determining steps. We're kind of putting E and F all together there. So overall, we showed the reaction was exothermic. The activation energy for the rate determining step, that's the letter F, is right up here where the initial rate determining step, step one, rate determining step had the higher activation energy. To clarify, we had to be very sure that the activation energy from the bottom here to the top of this hill was a smaller value for the second step than for the first step. Therefore, that's why this is the rate determining step. So some key things in this diagram. Make sure the reactants are at a higher energy than the overall product. We need two energy humps, two energy barriers known as activation energy, where the first of the activation energies has to be a larger value than the second. And I think we've accomplished all parts, giving yourself an A plus on question 